uh, online, if you go to my Canvas page, all the uh, all the lessons I have posted there. So if you whatever, if you want to go back and review or whatever you may need that for, it is there. Okay, here we go. Where we left off. So we were doing the last problem. Gosh, I've got to do jokes, Carson. I've been so, so, so serious here. It's ridiculous. Okay, so this is, we will, we will do jokes. Just, Eliza, don't let me forget. Okay, we were doing this problem here. Okay, and I told you, I put this up, and this was going to be the last problem that we're going to do with a differential rate law. And this is, again, kind of an AP-like problem. So let me go through this uh, quickly. And again, this is one I was wanting you guys to do. Can you guys at home hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. And you can see the notes. Can you guys see the notes at home? You can. Thanks, Lord. Lord Scott. I'm so lousy in technology. I always... I want to make sure. Okay, so let's do this problem. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find out two things, which we've done a lot here, is to write out the rate law, the rate equation. So it's going to be the the, uh, the the rate constant k, lowercase k, and then we have the reactants. And really, the trick here, like we've been talking about, is to figure out the exponents the X and the Y. And so this one's a little bit different because this one, if you look at F2, down the column for F2, it never has a repeating concentration, which means to, what I want to do here in doing this is I want to figure out the F2 first using the ratio method I showed you. And then when I figure out the X, I'm going to have to include F2. So in doing this, so I'm going to, again, figure out the Y first. And I'm going to use, in, in figuring out the Y, I'm going to use experiment one and two because, so, so if you have a problem like this, and again, here's what AP could do. They could throw you a problem like this. If you can figure out one of the exponents, do that first. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to figure out the Y. So I'm going to do experiment two and one, and, and that means I can just eliminate CL. O2 because its concentration doesn't change. And I'm going to put the larger number on top. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take uh, experiment two over experiment one. So again, right now I'm trying to figure out the y value. So I've got the rate for two, 9.6 times 10 to the negative third over... 2.4 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, and that is going to equal 0 0.40 over 0 0.10. And that's to the y. And again, I don't need to include the CL, ClO2 or the K because those are going to be eliminated. So what I get here is 4 equals 4. I got Y was equal to 1. And again, here's an AP-like problem. That's why it even says AP test problem, a little bit trickier. Okay, so I've got one. So now to figure out the X. And now the reason I wanted to figure that out is because when I, when I figure out X, I don't have where F2 is constant. So, so I'm going to have to include F2 in my ratios like I am here. And so I look at this, experiment 1, 2, and 3. I've got to have experiment 3. And uh, it doesn't really matter which one I choose, one or two. I'm going to choose, you know, in my period uh, two class, I chose experiment one. I did experiment three versus experiment one. I'm going to choose for us just to do it different. I'm going to do experiment three over two. I, does, I don't think it matters which one I choose. I'm going to get the same result. Now, in this, this time, I'm going to have to use the... Uh, I'm going to have to use the F2 in this because it's not constant. Okay, so I've got 9.6 times 10 to the negative 3 over 9.6 times 10 to the negative 3. And again, kind of restating what I just said, I could have done experiment 3 versus 1, but I think I would get the same answer. Okay, so then I've got 0 0.020 over 0 0.010 to the x. I'm trying to figure out the x. 
And I've got to include the F2 because it's not constant. So if I if I watch this, I have 0 0.20 over 0 0.40 to the first. So I this is the value now because I knew the value for y. I had determined that up here. Okay, so what I get here is 1 is equal to 2 to the x over 0.5, or not over 0.5, times 0.5. So then if I solve for this, so what I get is 2 is equal to 2 x. Can you see that, Laura? Yeah. So the value for x is what? And again, I did this in my period uh, 2 class this morning, and I did experiment 1 versus 3. I had to use 3 because it's the different one. But I got the same thing. So... This is, then, here's our vocabulary, then. It is first order in terms of ClO2. It is first order, it's F2, what was that, Lord? That's a little bit off the screen. The, the top part? Yeah. Thanks, Lord, for telling me that. Is that better? Okay. That's, uh, that's helpful. So it's, it's first order in ClO2, it's first order in F2, and it is second order overall. Okay, so there's our rate law, rate equation. Now to figure out the rate constant. And again, I could, you know, in, in period two today, I chose experiment one. I'm going to do for the sake of this, seeing I get the same thing, I'm going to choose experiment two. And again, it doesn't matter which one I do, I don't think. So if I'm going to plug in the number. So I'm solving now for K. So 9.6 times 10 to the negative third molarity per second is equal to K, which is X. The ClO2 is 0 0.010 to the first, and the F2 is 0 0.40 to the first. Okay, so if I solve now for K, which is X, and the unit here is the unit is important, is molarity. Okay, so I'm going to do this on my calculator. Again, I did this earlier today. And using experiment one, I think I got 2.4. Get 2.4. So the rate constant is 2.4. And the unit now, and again, we talked about this with the unit. So molarity goes, so my unit is 1 over molarity times seconds. And again, you could have written that also as molarity to the negative 1 seconds to the negative 1. You could have seen it that way. Okay, so that, sorry. So when you're solving for K, how do you know what the original is? You know, I could, have uh, I could have selected any of them. You know, and, and if... I actually, what is I in my period two class this morning, I chose one. I did reaction one. So I used 2.4 times 10 to the negative third, and then 0.01 and 0.1. I got the same value. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. Okay. We good? Okay, questions on that. So that is going to now in the rear view mirror will be the, uh, the differential rate law. And I want to just, and again, I'm not going to go too much longer. But I want to move into the next rate law called the integrated rate law. Okay, so I'm, let me put this up. The, what is important on this slide here is the very top two lines, the very top two lines, and then below where it says, and using calculus. The stuff in the middle, I'll leave it up. And for those of you that are in calculus, it may make sense to you. But AP Chemistry is not a class that has anything to do with calculus. There's no, uh, you have to be a calculus. Now, AP Physics, you do, but not AP Chemistry. And so all that derivation thing, they'll never, I will never ask you that. It would also be a good time as well. I want to point out something on the formula sheet. So, so get out your formula sheet as well. But Liza, we need to do jokes for crying out loud. Okay, today's, today's theme 
Jordan Lorick, Carson Tyler, and everybody else, is what do you call a man with no arms or legs joke day? So it's a mean joke day. What do you call a man with no arms or legs in a hole? Doug. Doug. What do you call a man with no arms or legs in the leaves? Russell. And wrestle around in those leaves. What do you call a man with no arms or legs on the wall? Art. Art. What do you call a man with no arms or legs in the water? Bob. Bob. What do you call a man with no arms or legs? Uh, on the front, on the front door, on the front porch. Matt. Matt. And what do you call a man with no arms or legs in a hot tub? Stu. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got for you guys today. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a minute to copy these. Up. And again, the stuff, the derivation stuff. So again, the top two lines are important. And then where it says using calculus. And this is going to be an equation that's actually on our formula sheet that uh, I want to point out. And, and then tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be like today. Tomorrow, for those of you that are in class, tomorrow we'll do about 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then we're done. And then the cohort B is going to do the lab that you guys are going to do. So uh, so that, so if we were to do some problems tomorrow in class using this equation, it's on our formula sheet. If the derivation part makes sense, great. But if it doesn't make any sense, no, you won't. For those of you in calculus, it may make sense. I forgot my calculus. So. It does. It does make sense. It does. It does. It does make sense. So like I said, what is important are the top two lines and what we've been just working with since last week, a bunch, and even in the problem that we just did, we did concentration versus rate data. And, and actually on today's lab, the sulfur lab, so the sulfur lab, again, we're going to do today, and, and cohort B, you guys will do tomorrow. It's about what we've been doing. It's about the differential rate law, okay? Well, now we're going to take the integrated rate law. It's going to do concentration versus time data. And I, and I want to just barely talk about this, and then I'm going to leave it. That is what the, the penny lab was about. That's where we did concentration versus time data. Uh, so we're going to be looking at concentration versus time data, and we're going to do a lot of graphing. And It's almost, I, I talked about this just a little bit last week, but you can go through the whole derivation and using calculus for first order reactions, this is the equation. And if you look on your formula sheet, and if you look on the formula sheet right here where it says kinetics, it's right down here. Can you see that, Lauren? See this, the formula sheet where I'm pointing out? Now, now, I've kind of written it just in a different order. It's the same thing. Now, you might want to note this. So in the way I have it written, or however, you can write it down here. And you might even write, want to write down here, like I have, this is the first order integrated rate law. The first order integrated rate law where it says LNAT minus LNA0 equals negative KT. That might be worth writing in on your formula sheet. Now, the way that I have it written in here, again, it's the same thing. LNAT equals negative KT plus LNA0. Uh, it's the same thing. So, again, on your formula sheet, and I'll try and remember to point this out again tomorrow, but this is called the integrated rate law, and this is for a first-order reaction. A first order reaction. And again, we're going to do some, some I, I don't know, not, I don't think super difficult, but new plug and chug problems. But this is the ending concentration or the final concentration. And you might want to write that down. Carson, question? Um, 
So on the formula sheet, the one below that one, is that for second order? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me look and make sure. That is, yep, that's for second order. Yep. Okay, so the L the AT is the ending or the final concentration. K is the rate constant. T is the time. And A0 is the initial concentration. And LN is the natural log. And we're not going to get into the math. We're in chemistry. We're not in math class. So we're going to do, we're going to be dealing with the, with, uh, the chemistry aspects of this. And, and, I, and the first thing I'm going to do on tomorrow, Tuesday, is I'm going to, we're going to do a couple of problems using this equation. Okay, so again, note this. This is the, the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Okay, I want to do one more slide and then we're going to stop. Okay, and we're going to come back and we're going to use this. But this on this slide here, the only thing that's important, the only thing that's important is the, the, uh, the sentence there. And I want to add a little bit to it. So you, you, if you want to sketch it out, you can. But a graph of the natural log versus time will be linear if the reaction is first order. And notice I said an important concept. So, so I'll, I'll give you a, a minute or two. But again, the, the data and the graph, I'm going to come back and review this. But the key thing, and, and again, I'm going to ask, add one more thing to this. But a graph of the natural log of A, the reactant, versus time will be linear if the reaction is first order. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do some graphing. We're going to graph, and, and again, I think I mentioned this, and this was about the... The penny lab. We're going to graph the concentration versus time. If that's linear, it's zero order. We're going to graph the natural log versus time. If that is linear, it is first order. And then if we did the reciprocal of the concentration, kind of what the other one on the formula sheet is, versus time, if that's linear, then it's going to be second order. And I'm going to talk about all this this week. Okay, one other thing that I haven't got. So when we graph the natural log versus time, if it's linear, like the graph on the right here, it's first order. And one thing that I don't have written down, but you should note this, the rate constant is the slope of whatever the straight line is. The rate constant is the slope of the straight line. And that is where I want to leave that. And, uh, and that is where I'm going to real quick review that. And then we're going to do... Uh, continue on and we're again tomorrow is going to be a lot like today so i am going to stop there and for those of you at home you guys are dismissed for today and you guys can work on uh Whatever you want to work on. If you want, if you have questions, if you just hang hang on for, uh, I don't know, probably be a little more than five minutes. I want to get these guys going, but I'm more than happy to answer your questions. But if not, you guys are are dismissed. So, thanks, Mr. Wood. Have a good one. See you, Alan. Have a good day, buddy. See you tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Okay. So.